Hello everyone and welcome to DeepNex. In this video, we are going to talk about activation functions. The choice of the right activation function is very important because it governs the functioning of your model. There are generally two types of activation functions, the saturating activation function and the non-saturating activation functions. Some examples of the saturating activation functions are the sigmoid activation function, the tan h activation function or the logistic activation function. Whereas ReLU, sin and other variants of ReLU belongs to the non-saturating functions. Saturating functions are those functions whose values saturate as they approach the limits. Now, this is something mathematical, but you don't have to worry about it. But the question comes, where are these activation functions used? Well, each activation function is applied to the outputs of each neuron present in a hidden or output layer. You heard right, only the hidden and the output layer. Activation function is never applied on the input layer. Concerning about this particular hidden layer, it consists of multiple neurons. So when the inputs are fed to this hidden layer, each neuron gives an output value. Instead of directly feeding this output to the next layer, it is first passed through an activation function. After that, these outputs or so-called the final outputs are passed to the next layer. The choice of the activation function on the output layer depends upon the range of values you want to output. Whereas the choice of activation function for the hidden layer depends upon what kind of nature you want from your model. If you do not choose any activation function, then by default it will behave linearly. An activation function also decides how the gradient descent algorithm is going to converge to the final solution. Okay, let's look at different activation functions and understand how they work. Let's start with the most common activation function, the sigmoid activation function, also called the logistic activation function. As you can see, the graph of a sigmoid activation function looks like S, ranging from 0 to 1. The domain of the sigmoid activation function is from negative infinity to positive infinity, which is going to be the general case for all activation functions. That means this function can take in any value, but it will always output values between 0 to 1. This is generally useful when you want your model to output probabilities, like in a binary classification task. Let's see it's working. First, the inputs are fed to a particular neuron. The neuron produces its output, but the output is passed through the sigmoid activation function, which gives us the final output. The final output always ranges between 0 to 1. The softmax activation function is a more generalized form of the sigmoid activation function, especially made for multi-class classification. Here I have used the terms like binary classification and multi-class classification. If you are not familiar with these terms, in simple word, these are the types of problem that we try to solve using machine learning or deep learning. I have a separate video on the types of machine learning task. The link is in description. Let's have a look at the tan h activation function. The domain of the function is from negative infinity to positive infinity. That means the function can take in any value. The activation function is also S-shaped and differentiable, but it always output values between negative 1 to positive 1, unlike sigmoid which output values between 0 to 1. This range tends to make each layer's output more or less centered around 0. At the beginning of training, which often speeds up the convergence, 
this activation function is generally used in image generation and recurrent neural networks. It's time for the king of all activation functions, the ReLU activation function. It is called the king of all activation functions because it is most commonly used. It is used in basically every single neural network. This function has a unique property. It behaves like two different functions. If the values are negative, then the function becomes y equals 0. If the values are positive, it becomes y equals x. In general, the function is the max of 0 or z. Here, z represents the input of ReLU activation function. If we go through the process of applying this function to the output of a neuron, then the final output will always range between 0 to infinity. Well, ReLU stands for Rectified Linear Unit. It turns out that ReLU is non-differentiable at 0, which should be a problem, but in practice it works well and has the advantage of being fast to compute. So, it has become a tradition. Moreover, the fact that it does not have any maximum output value helps to reduce some issues of gradient descent. ReLU is the tradition, but unfortunately it is not perfect. It suffers from the dying neuron problem. That is, the neuron keeps outputting zero. Let's have a look at this. Consider you have some set of inputs. These inputs are fed to the neuron, which performs the weighted sum and passes the output to the ReLU activation function. Now, a dying neuron problem occurs when the gradients are tweaked in such a way that the neuron keeps outputting negative values. Thus, when negative values are passed to the ReLU activation function, it always outputs zero because ReLU is the max of zero or z. And whenever the input is negative, the output will always be zero. This is how the neuron dies. To solve this problem, you may want to use a variant of ReLU called leaky ReLU. Leaky ReLU is defined by f of x equal to max of alpha times z and z. The value of alpha is generally chosen to be 0.01. This small leak ensures that the neuron never die. The neuron may go into a long coma, but it will have a chance to eventually wake up. Thus, it is also divided into two parts. The part with positive values is still the same, but the part with negative values has now changed it to alpha times z or z. The overall process still remains the same. Keep in mind that the hyperparameter alpha defines how much the function leaks. A 2015 paper compared several variants of ReLU and the conclusion came that leaky ReLU outperformed ReLU. In fact, setting alpha to 0.2, a huge leak seemed to perform better than alpha equals 0.01. Not just this, there are multiple versions of the leaky ReLU function itself, such as the randomized leaky ReLU or the parameterized leaky ReLU. However, it turns out that the normal leaky ReLU is generally the best. A new activation function called the exponential linear unit or ELU outperformed ReLU. Now the names could be quite confusing, but it is just ELU and ReLU. The training time was reduced and the neural network generalized better. However, the main drawback of this activation function is that it is slower to compute than ReLU and other variants due to the use of exponential function, due to which it is not frequently used. Then, a 2017 paper introduced scaled ELU, also called CELU. 
This is a scaled variant of LU activation function. The authors showed that if you build a neural network with all hidden layers using cellu activation function, then the network will self-normalize. The outputs of each layer will tend to preserve a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. During training which solves the unstable gradient problem and outperforms other activation functions. However, there are few conditions for this to happen. Like your model should be sequential, your model should use a leak and normal initializer, and many more. In general, Selu is better than ELU, which is better than leaky ReLU, which indeed is better than ReLU, which obviously is better than the saturating activation functions. Still, ReLU will achieve a good solution in many cases. Leaky ReLU and its variants are applied using layers, not activations. This is something which we will understand once we start coding the network. That's all for today. Now, as you have made till the end of this video, I want you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. Here is the video for coding a multi-layer perceptron. Otherwise, I recommend you to check out my playlist so that you can gain access to all my videos in a single click. The link to the videos for different machine learning tasks and gradient descent is available in the description. You can check it out. Thank you.